Hello everyone and welcome back to week four of the 20 and 20 challenge. This is part three, I think, which is going to cover uh, very quickly how you create a delete request for our uh, front end JavaScript back end Rails API double project project thing. Uh, so all we're going to be doing is creating a really fast uh, XML HTTP request where we just say, hey man, can you delete this thing? Uh, that would be great, thanks. Uh, and we're also going to clean up the form so that when you uh, submit something via the form, uh, it will clear the input field so your last uh, like to-do task will be gone. Uh, so it should only take like, you know, eight, eight to ten minutes maybe. Um, and it's really just a primer so that you have the delete functionality separate from the styling that we're going to cover now in the next video. Because I didn't want to include that just sort of as like a, you know, non sequitur in the styling video. That way you guys don't have to like say, oh man, I really want to do this delete thing. But it takes him like 15 minutes to finish styling some CSS before he gets to it in this video. It also kind of makes it harder to find the video because I then have to like combine the titles and be like styling and deleting and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be a quick video. Uh, let's just go ahead and let's jump into some code. Okay, so we really only have uh, one thing to do in this video, which is the delete functionality. Uh, we'll also clear up this form so that it doesn't say example, and when you submit something, like example submit, uh, it cleans up the input field real quick. So it should be a quicker episode, and then we can move on to styling uh, later today whenever that video finishes processing. So uh, the first thing we'll do to clean up this input form is we'll come over to our index.html page. And then once we're in here, we need to come down to our input type uh, text. And just at the end, we'll say ID is equal to uh, task input. And then we'll save this and we'll copy over this ID. And then down here, after we send the data from the form, we'll just say document dot get element by ID. We'll grab that ID and we'll say the value for it should be equal to the empty string and we'll refresh. Uh, this should clear the input and there you go the input is cleared so that takes care of that the next thing we'll do is we'll make it so that if you click on one of these tasks you can delete them so this is going to be two parts um, the first is cre uh, cleaning up the create response because we need to um, give these tasks some way for us to grab them like a div with an id and we're also doing that so that we can click on the div itself to delete the task rather than clicking on a link. So let's go ahead and let's get started with that. Uh, so I'm just going to clean out all of this and I'm going to switch it to a return statement inside of parentheses. Uh, we're going to start with some back ticks. So those are on the tilde by the one escape and tab if you're on an American keyboard. Uh, and then we're going to say div with a class equal to task. And we're using the back ticks here so that when we say id equal right here, uh, we can open up some quotes and we can um, inside of here use the dollar sign and then the braces to say response.id. And it's just a way to do this without using pluses to uh, append everything. And the other thing we need to do is we need to say on click delete response. And this is a function we haven't created yet. So let's come down here and just create this real quick. So we'll say function delete response. You could also call this like delete task or just delete. Uh, I'm going to keep it consistent and say delete response and it's going to take in a response ID. So now we can come up here and for the delete response inside of some uh, parentheses, uh, we can say uh, let's pass in the uh, response response.id and uh, that should pass it in and then outside of the parentheses we need a double quotes to finish off our on click double quotes and then we need a uh, angle bracket to finish off our, uh, our div right here so if I full screen it you can see this matches up with this these back ticks are matching up with each other these quotes are keeping the on click quotes together um, and then we have the single quotes here so that we're passing in a response ID string. So we can save that and hopefully the code for no the code, code formatter doesn't like that. So I'm not going to save yet. So instead I'm going to hit plus 
And then down here, we're going to do the same thing we had before. So we'll say uh, square bracket plus, and then the response.id plus another square bracket, colon space, and then plus, uh, and then we're gonna do the response.task plus, uh, and then we can either just do a br here plus the uh, closing div, or you could just grab this closing div and put it up here and get rid of this. Um, I'm going to leave it on the other line just so that it's a bit more readable. Uh, but yeah, you could do it the other way if you wanted to. You could also do this entire thing on one line if you wanted to. I don't necessarily know if I would agree with that. Uh, because, you know, you should focus keeping your code readable. Uh, that's a bit more important than being super impressive by writing like a whole minified JS file in one line. <laughs> But uh, let's move on to the delete response. So we're going to create another XHttp var here, and we're going to say this is equal to a new XML HTTP request again. Uh, we're then going to do an XHttp.open. We're going to open a delete request. It's going to be to the, uh, and I'm going to use backticks here, HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 3001 slash to do's, which is our API. And then we're going to pass in the uh, response ID. And then outside of that, we're going to say comma true because we're doing this asynchronously. And that last argument needs to be a Boolean then. Uh, we're then going to say xhttp.onload is equal to a function. And it doesn't take any parameters. And then here, all we have to do is say let the target equal the document dot get element by ID. And we're going to grab the uh, response ID because that's um, this response ID is what we're passing in here. And up here, it's, we're passing in a strict response ID string, which is the ID of this div. So we're basically passing this div in here. And then down here, we're saying get the uh, div and set that div to be the target. So once we have the target, we then grab the target's parent. And we say from the parent node, remove the child node, which is this target. And then down here, we can say xhttp.send, and we'll just send in null. And assuming we did all of that correctly, if I come over here and refresh the page, and I click on like this should clear the input, that gets rid of it. I can remove one more. Uh, I can remove this top one, and if I refresh the page, it's gone, and we can even like open up a new tab and come over here, and it'll still you know, function just like last time. So we'll just say, uh, we'll make another task. And it clears the input, it adds in the new task, and again, you can change where this gets added, so maybe you want this to be like the after begin. So then you say like, um, hello. And now it's sorting like that. And I think that actually might have fixed the style. What did I have before? Oh, before begin. So yeah, that was sort of breaking everything. Uh, I'm assuming I probably addressed that in the last video in like an edit. Uh, and now we're here. But um, this, yeah, so this should work um, for now. And then in the next video, we'll cover uh, how to style this. So I do have that demo app open up over here. So if I refresh the page, you'll see we have the exact same uh, tasks in both of these because they're both using the same API, which is the server. Uh, but this one's just styled a little bit nicer. So, you know, we can say uh, make a sandwich. And then uh, this one isn't clearing the form. So that's something that will change. But then let's say after you make a sandwich, you then want to edit a video. Uh, and then you need to uh, post about it on Twitter because you're just one of those people. And then, you know, these three sound good, but these three you already did. So we can just uh, hover over these and delete them. And that's sort of what we'll cover in uh, the next episode. I just wanted to make this delete one separate so that you guys can easily follow this if you're using it for something else and you don't get bogged down in the unnecessary styling and stuff. Yeah, I hope this helps, and uh, I'll see you guys in the outro video. Okay, so that's going to do it for um, this. My light just turned off. Okay, so that's going to do it for this uh, part four, part three deletion video. 
Um, I'll have part four coming out later today, which will cover the uh, CSS styling to make things look a bit more like the, what did I call it, like the to-do stream uh, version of the application. Uh, so that if you guys are following along to have like a finished project, you can at least have something that doesn't look unstyled. I won't say it doesn't look terrible because, again, I'm the one that designed the styling for this, which naturally means it leaves a lot to be desired. Um, but hopefully you guys are finding some value out of these videos and, uh, you know, that should be a good primer for next week's uh, React videos, assuming I can get those working. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, if you like this video, remember to like it. If you didn't like it, remember to dislike it so we don't subject other people to it. Uh, and if you like this series, then remember to subscribe because apparently I have signed up for another 16 weeks of this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in part four in a couple hours, hopefully.